free agency is upon us. The draft not far behind. Getting smarter people than me on this show is something I like to do. Trevor Sigma, my pro football focus. It's his turn. Let's go. You are locked on Cardinals. Your daily Arizona Cardinals podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Locked On Cardinals, Alex Clancy here. Follow me on Twitter, Clancy's Corner. Follow the podcast at Locked On AZ Cards. Thank you for making Locked On Cardinals your first listen free wherever you get your podcast and on YouTube, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more right now. New customers get 150 bucks in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. It's 150 bucks. If your bet wins, visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. Free agency is upon us. We're 48 hours away, 72 hours away from real free agency beginning. Trevor Sikama, one of my uh, one of my dear friends. We kind of, I mean, he is the lead draft analyst over at Pro Football Focus. Um, started with Locked On a long time ago. I don't know if people knew that. Um, and he's made waves across this great U.S. of A. with his football knowledge. Trev, thanks for joining me, dude. Of course, Alex, man. I appreciate you having me on the show, as always, my friend. Yeah, so it's a little bit different since the last time we talked. Um, pretty much the time Trevor and I spent together was ripping Steve Kime and Cliff Kingsbury and trying to figure <laughs> out how to circumvent. I mean, that's kind of just kind of what it was. I was doing that, and you weren't disagreeing. Trevor's a little bit nicer than I am when it comes <laughs> to this. Um, but, you know, the Cardinals have turned over New Leaf. Uh, Monty Osward has been a darling of analytics, of draft minds. Brad Spielberger, another pro football focus genius over there, has been a huge Monty supporter as well. Um, I kind of want to frame this as such. Your thoughts through the Cardinals 2023 season, even though it was marred with injury and, you know, far more losses than wins, the precipice of free agency, and then we'll pivot into the draft in the next segment. So give me your thoughts about the 2023 Cardinals and if they surprised you a little bit more than you expected. No, they totally did. They, 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 totally blew my expectations out of the water. And that's kind of crazy saying that of a team that won what they win like four games, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, like not many football games, but I was still really impressed with how that team was playing because you look on paper, this was going to be one of the worst rosters in the league, especially with Kyler Murray out for the first half of the season. We wondered if he was going to miss the entire season, if there was going to be no reason to rush him back. But uh, you know, I think even when they got out there at the very beginning of the year, you felt like, okay, this team's going to be a little bit more competitive than we than we believe that they were going to be. You got that Giants game where they really had that game in hand. They played really well, should have won that game. But even at the end of it with them losing, it's like, wow, okay, they took the Giants to the wire. This is a team that had a coach of the year last year. And, of course, the Giants, we saw how they played out in 2023. And so maybe it's a little bit less impressive. But still, at the time, really competing as a team that made the playoffs last year and really put it on them. And then – I think it was the week after that, right? They actually get the win against the Dallas Cowboys, which I will say I'm in a uh, survivor pool every single year. And uh, I picked the Cowboys. You yeah, better believe that I picked the Cowboys. So so I was, uh, I was both impressed and pissed off at the same yeah. time. And no, I mean, that was just kind of, it felt like the theme then throughout the season is you couldn't really take the Cardinals for granted. Now, like talent-wise, okay, talent won out. There were more talented teams that ended up beating them throughout the season. But I was impressed with, what Jonathan Gannon was able to do in that first season, I already loved what Monty Austinfort did the offseason before, especially how he navigated the draft, some of those players and how they played, like Paris Johnson Jr. and Garrett Williams when he got out there, what Michael Wilson was for that team, you know, Keetra Clark here and there. Like, there were just a lot of really nice players for them who they drafted last year. You knew that they would have the opportunity to get snaps, and when those guys did, they played well. So I, I, I think that this part, to me, actually speaks the loudest. Kyler, sure, competitor is not going to guy just like sit on the sideline. Like I get it, but Kyler didn't really have a big reason to come back this season, right? I mean, like he could have milked that injury, and even if we all would have been like, "All right, you probably could have come back, buddy." Like everybody would have been like, "Yeah, all right, we know that you're not really doing anything this year. You don't want to rush it. You don't want to risk re-injuring yourself. Anything like that." But he came back earlier than I thought he was going to come back, and that team looked competitive with him. So I think that Kyler was around that team and around that organization. It was like, yeah, I want in on this. And, and to me, him coming back as early as he did, I already, like I said, I already knew that Kyler was a competitor. But to me, that spoke more about the situation, that he wanted to not only buy in but get involved as soon as he possibly could. And so to me, 
uh, yeah, sure. Wins and losses, not exactly what you wanted, but I was impressed with what that team was able to do after such a uh, strong cleaning of house, if you will, and, and kind of what they were able to do after that. Yeah, man. I mean, it's the, since the beginning of the new regime with Michael Bidwell doing everything he said he was going to do up until this point, you know, how he treats his employees, notwithstanding with the, you know, pending lawsuits, et cetera, just football centric wise. He's done everything he said he was going to do. Cast a wide net, find a guy with 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 true, you know, scouting and football acumen. Brought in Monty Osborne, Dave Sears. I'm sure you're a huge fan of his well bringing in his AGM. And and uh, Jonathan Gannon kind of leading the charge, leading the cabinet of new coaches who had never been in the positions that they're currently in. And the Cardinals just, they showed stability. And that's something that we've been craving here in the Valley. Like, yeah, they're, Cliff Kingsbury showed moments of incredible greatness. And then it was just marred by, you know, not being able to call timeouts right. And it's just like, it, it, it was it was just a weird dichotomy of, of, um, of issues. And when you look at pivoting now, like, at, I, I call it the proof of concept. 2023 was the proof of concept year for the new GM, the new head coach, Kyler Murray coming back, specifically the offense with Drew Petzing, where it's a, it's a big boy offense. You run the ball, you run play action. Cardinals ran the ball better than 90% of football teams in the NFL last year which is wild with, with them being devoid of talent in key spots. So with Kyler Murray, I agree. And then pivoting now, it's like with the offseason upon us, with free agency here, big names have been tagged, which doesn't mean that, you know, they can't be traded for, things like that. But, you know, big names are most likely going to be staying with the teams that they're at. And Legereus Sneed maybe an outlier, Brian Burns. Do you see the Cardinals being huge haymaker makers this offseason? Or do you see this as kind of a – two-year relevancy rebuild once they got through 2023. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't be shocked if they go after, like, some – and I don't have anybody off the top of my head because, yeah. you know, when you look at the Cardinals roster, it's kind of this point to where, you know, even though they played well last year, they could still use a lot of different talent in a lot of different areas. So if they wanted to make a big splash, just to kind of signify – just to show everybody, like, hey, we're, we're still involved in this. Like, we're still really trying to move forward. But I believe they're going to continue to emphasize the draft the most. You know, the first two years, that's what I thought that their plan was going to be. And, again, I thought that Austin Ford did a really great job of that last offseason. They've got a lot of picks. They've got those two extra first-round picks this year. Or, sorry, they have their pick, but then they have the extra first-round pick. They've got a lot of draft picks to choose from, and I think that's going to continue to build the core of this team. So where I could see them making maybe one big splash, I think that their time for free agency really is going to be either next year or the year after that, right? Get this draft class, get the identity of this team exactly where you want it to be, and a year from now, you will have a lot better idea of did, did all of the guys that we drafted work out the way that we wanted them to? Because free agency, it's about supplementing the roster that you have, right? And the, the, the depth of the roster, the core of the roster, that foundation is always, every GM will tell you the same thing. It's built through the draft. That is your foundation of your roster. What you do when you have money to spend there is you try to make those splash uh, signings to kind of put you over the top because, of course, not you, you, You've only got one first round pick every single year. When you're lucky, you get two. And and mm -hmm. even then it's kind of, you're talking about moving back some years to, to acquire that and all that stuff. So all that to say, I don't think they're going to be the loudest voice in the room when it comes to free agency, when all that gets kicked off. I don't think they're going to be silent. I don't think they're going to just be uh, a bystander as free agency is going by. They'll be involved, but I really feel as though the time for them to spend a lot of money is going to come um, in 2025 and then 2026 as well. Yeah, that's a good call. I mean, and there's one thing that just needs to be remembered. is like these players are free agents for a reason. If the if the mm -hmm. team that currently had them on their roster thought they were worth the money that they desired, they would resign them. And that's something that just kind of gets overlooked because you get the star-studded names and things like that. But you're right. I mean, I, I think that that's, that's a very cautiously optimistic way to approach this offseason to free agency and then just blow the roof off the next couple of years. Trevor Sigma, pro football focus joins me. Uh, let's hit the draft. Um, you know, this is the question that has been thwarting my mind. Marvin Harrison Jr. or an unpass on, un, unable to pass on trade back. 
Mm-hmm. Which is more important for the future of this team? Alex Lancey, Locked on Cardinals, Trevor Sigma, Pro Football Focus. We'll hit that next. This episode of Locked on Cardinals is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Get buckets with your first bet on FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. It's $150 if your bet wins. Bet on all your favorite NBA players and teams. I mean, we're getting down the stretch. The thing I'm most excited about is just, as my alarm goes off, um, futures. Who's going to win the NBA championship? It is never Pin, it is so wide open at this point. You're going to take the odds on favorite with, with Boston. Denver is skyrocketing up the charts. You're going to take a, you know, a, a, you know, a little bit further on favorite. Suns, Lakers, somebody like that. FanDuel's got you covered for all of it. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and shoot your shot. FanDuel, official sportsman partner of the NBA. Alex Lancey, locked on Cardinals. Trevor Sikama, pro football focus, joining me for a couple segments here in his busy schedule. Um, are you going somewhere tropical after the draft? So I actually, we, we've been doing this the last couple of years, my fiance and I, we find the sweet spot in between the senior bowl and the combine. And we actually oh. take like a mini little vacation there just cause I'm, you know, when the combine hits, then I'm, you know, hitting the ground running when it comes to just finishing out draft season strong. So I'm sure the answer to that is yes, but we did get a little bit of a tropical vacation oh already in between those two events. So. And boy, follow me on Twitter, Clancy's Corner. Follow the podcast at Locked On AZ Cards. Still locked out of my Twitter account. I don't know why. I'm uh, going on three weeks now. So follow Locked On AZ Cards. Um, you can connect with me there. Um, the draft, you know, um, I don't use this term anymore. I'm not exactly sure why, but I used to use the term eat your vegetables with Steve Kime. He would never draft the person necessary to build the team correctly. He mm-hmm. would take the I'm the smartest person in the room pick and go against everything else. And when you look at Marvin Harrison Jr. at four, most – Many, most see him as arguably the best actual prospect in the draft, irrespective of position. Um, The question that I have, and with J.J. McCarthy shooting up draft boards, Jaden Daniels been up there, Drake may may be the odd man out here at four. It's going to fluctuate so much in Caleb Williams. Trevor, my biggest question here, because this is something the Cardinals are going to have to, you know, come into contact with in some form or fashion on draft night. Mm Mm-hmm. Would you take Marvin Harrison Jr. and not think about it? Or if you're offered a first and two seconds, two firsts, depending on how far back you have to trade back, and a couple other picks to move back, which is more important to the Arizona Cardinals as they currently sit? Well, first of all, I'm sad that you don't use the phrase eat your vegetables nearly as much anymore because I quote you all the time because I, you said that yeah. first about draft stuff. And I you know, I will go on other shows and whenever I talk about drafting a trench player, something that's not sexy, I will always say, as my friend Alex Clancy said to me, you got to eat your vegetables sometimes. So Boom, it, love it. even if you haven't said it too much, it lives on, you know, that I quote you're still that. living on. I think that it's a perfect <laughs> way to describe things like that. But, you know, for the Cardinals, I, I think – Given where they are as a team, I would actually lean towards the trade back if you Mm. get the offer that you think that you're going to get. But I don't know if that's going to exist is the problem, right? Because you've got three teams in front of you. There's a good chance that all three of them could take a quarterback. Or maybe New England is that team that's going to trade back for somebody to move up and go get a Jaden Daniels, a Drake May, a J.J. McCarthy, whoever it's going to be. So, unfortunately... There's kind of two ways that you could look at it, right? If you if if most teams in the NFL believe that there are four top 15, I'll say just to be safe, worthy starting potential quarterbacks in this draft. Uh you throw Caleb Williams in with the other three names. If three of them are off the board, you could either say, well, that hurts your price because three are off the board. Or it helps the price because there's only one left and you're trying to up the bidding war with maybe the the Giants at six, Atlanta at eight, the Vikings at 11, the Broncos at 12, the Raiders at 13. I think it's We're going to kind of figure out who's going to maybe be the most desperate of those teams once free agency comes to pass. But I I'm not so sure it's going to work out that way. Like if, if they're sitting there at number four and if only two quarterbacks have gone before them. Like, let's say, let's say the New England Patriots take Marvin Harrison Jr. Let's say they take Joe Walt at three. Well, like either one, it doesn't really matter to me because I think the conversation is the same for the Cardinals because I know they like both those guys. If there's only two quarterbacks that are gone, 
I think you can get a price that makes it worth it for Arizona to move back. You know, like you said, two extra second round picks, um, but maybe just a first round pick uh, the, the next year, whatever it is. I think that becomes very alluring to you because you're, of course, only trading back so far. Like you're probably trading back to eight or let's just say 11 through 13, one of those other teams that I mentioned, you're trading outside of the top 10, you still get a really damn good football player, right? I mean, the top three receivers probably won't be there, but you probably get a starting offensive tackle that you really need, right? Olufashano will probably be there. Talisa Fuango will probably still be there. Troy Fatanu will probably still be there, right? And so like any of those guys, I think are st- immediate starters for you along the offensive line. So to me, having that strategy then you still have the late first, you still have the early second, and then you got another first next year if you're dropping all the way back outside the top 10. That, to me, is worth it for this team. We went through what the free agency mindset and the strategy would be and how I think they're still a year away from really setting up that core. I know you're moving on from number four. You're moving on from a Marvin Harrison Jr. or a Joe All, and that is tough to do. But this draft class is really good, and if there's a year to do it and then go get another extra first-round pick, I feel like this is kind of that year to be able to do it. So it depends how many quarterbacks are gone and which quarterbacks are left. Right. But if the deal is of that sort of price, either a first rounder next year, or I'd even probably say an extra second this year and an extra second next year, I, I'd probably do that if I'm Arizona. Yeah. See, the – the timing of this, a lot of it has been great with Monty Osborne taking over Jonathan Gannon, Kyler Murray coming back from injury. Like everything has kind of worked out timing wise for the first time in a while. It's been very serendipitous. Like everything's kind of come to a head. And now it's like, okay, go. You got cat money for the next two years. You've got a lot of things going in your, and then now it's, you're in the age of the wide receiver. And, and, and that's the tough part where it's like, there's going to be another five, seven, eight wide receivers that'll go in the first two rounds next. Like, I feel like that's the kind of trend that we're going and correct me if I'm wrong, but it's like, if they do not end up with Marvin Harrison Jr., Marvin Harrison Jr. goes before them at four and they do trade out. It's not like this is a, you know, running back heavy league where you only get a couple wide receivers a year. Like, is this going to be a trend moving forward? Do you think where wide receivers, they're going to be some busts. They're going to be some massive hits. Do you think this is more where we're going as opposed to retracting from this? You're saying just like a lot of wide receiver talent overall. Every year. Yeah, and I completely agree. And and here's the other thing. Wide receivers, even some really damn good ones, become available in trade. Like Tyree yeah. Kill got traded. Devontae Adams got traded. T. Higgins is basically like up for trade right now, you know? So it's like not only do you have an opportunity to pick a really good wide receiver basically any year of the draft, maybe not a Marvin Harris Jr. type, but like you got a guy who could really help out your football team. That happens almost every single year. The pro market also yields some of these guys that you can go get. So that is also sometimes my argument for, hey, draft the trench player because the trench player never becomes available, whether it's free agency or whatever. You basically either draft a good trench player or you don't get one at all on your team. So, you know, like you said, free agency, there's a reason why these guys are hitting free agency. So that's just not normally the case with wide receivers. There's a lot of opportunity to go get a really good one. And that's why, man, I I think I'd rather, if I'm Arizona, for as great as Marvin Harrison Jr. is, and I'm going to be honest, I've been doing this full time for seven, eight years now. Marvin Harrison Jr. is probably going to be the highest graded prospect that I've ever had. Like, it's just hard to find a hole and a weakness in his game. So it's really hard to pass that up. But when you are where Arizona is, it'd be a good pick. Don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to say that it wouldn't, but I'd be really tempted to get more darts of the dartboard, if you will, knowing where this franchise is at. Damn. Yeah. So this is going to make this question easy. Um, it is Marvin Harrison Jr. One and then a Dunes and neighbors two, three in, in whatever order. Yes. I think, I think that it is. Now I will say this though, you know, my grading scale, you can earn a top five grade, which is normally something that signals you have the ability to be tier one of your position in the NFL. That's normally what that means. So I have top 10, five grades, top 10 grade, then just a regular first round grade. And then a late first, early second. Then it kind of goes on from there. Marvin is, has that top five grade, but I'll tell you, 
Malik neighbors has a top 10 grade. You know, I give him a, this is a future all pro player type of a guy. So, and then Romo Dunze is right behind him as I have him just with a really solid first round grade as well. So, um, and he's kind of like teetering on that line of having a top 10 all pro grade too. So it's, it is Marvin at the top for me and I'm not really thinking twice about it, but just these other two guys are so, so good. So especially like if, if a situation exists where Like, let's say Atlanta, right? Atlanta is trying to get from eight to four to go up to get the quarterback that they want. They've got a second round pick this year, but they'll probably have two third round picks because of their trade with Calvin, the Calvin Ridley trade, the tail end of that. So they'll have two third round picks. So they could say, all right, well, we'll either give you a second round pick or we can give you a third round pick this year, one of those extra third round picks, and we'll give you a second next year. All the Cardinals have to do is go from four to eight and they can still probably draft one of Malik neighbors or Romo Dunze. Like that's the ultimate dream. If you ask me, um, if you're the Arizona Cardinals. Yeah. And that's fascinating part. And listen, uh, Trevor doesn't know I'm asking this. He thought he was going to do two segments. We only got through the top pick in the first round. He can't say no because people are watching. Do you have five more minutes for me, please? Yeah, of course I do. Of course I do. That's professionalism. That's when you put people on the spot. We're going to hit 27. We'll talk second round and the third round for five minutes after the break. Trevor Sikkim, my pro football focus, one of the best out there. Alex Nancy, Locked on Cardinals. We'll be right back. This episode of Locked on Cardinals is brought to you by BetterHelp. Um, a lot of times, you know, you overwork. You spend your life wishing we had more time. Me, like I, working from home is a blessing and a curse, man. I'm working 16 hour days with both of my gigs and, you know, it can get to be a lot. And the question is, what do you want to make time for? If time was unlimited, how would you use it? And the best way to squeeze the special thing into your schedule is to know what's important to you and make it, make it a priority. And therapy can help you with that, can help you find what matters to you. And so you can do more of it. And if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Learn to make time for what makes you happy with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash locked on today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash locked on. All right. Trevor Sikama. Lead draft analyst over pro football focus has a great podcast. What's a podcast that I, I always butcher it? NFL stock exchange is what NFL it's stock exchange. That is so because you joined me for an extra two minutes, I'm going to give you a minute here. The NFL stock exchange is one of the best podcasts out there because first of all, it's long form. Okay. So it's not like you're going to get 20 minutes. It's not snackable at all. There are great clips, everything like that. The, the, the actual mock drafts, are on Pro Football Focus with your co-host, talking about trades, completely nerding out about football for two hours. So usually I'll go to a pick before the Cardinals and a pick after, because that's always with mock drafts. It's not just where the Cardinals are, the dartboard that's thrown by a specific draft analyst. It's always two picks before, two, three picks after for everyone, because that's kind of the range that players are going to be around, you'd think, because the smartest minds are putting that stuff out there. So check out the stock NFL Stock Exchange. They do a great job over there. You guys do a great job. I appreciate it, man. That um, means it's done. We're having a lot of yeah, fun. You have to there, research so that stuff. Like that. That's that's a uh, that's not just the people. The <laughs> common misconception of this business is you just turn a mic on. It's like, ooh, that's fun. Let's talk about sports now. The majority of the work is done before you actually turn the mic on. It's Phil Jackson said, if you practice right, you don't have to coach during the game. That's kind of when you turn the mic on. You kind of show your stuff. So, twenty-seven overall, thirty-five or thirty-six overall. Then mm-hmm. they've got three picks in the third round. Okay. So I kind of want to work backwards here for the next like five minutes or so. Big names in the third round targeted, even though I don't necessarily think either of them will make it potentially, but this is why you're here. Xavier Leggett and Blake Corn. Okay, these are the big names, the hot button names. Uh, usually there's a running back that goes almost a full round before they were mocked. Blake Corn won the national championship. He's short, but he's stocky. Mm-hmm. You say he's, a, he's an NFL runner. Um, Xavier Leggett is an absolute gazelle in space, had one breakout time um at, at South Carolina talk to me about both of these guys and if you think they'll both and this is very quick if you think they'll both be around in the third round or if the Cardinals would have to target them a little bit higher yeah um you know Corum's Corum's floor is the third round right he's just too good of a running back to be drafted anywhere past the third round but I I just wonder if some team's going to draft him in the late parts of the second right and that's why like maybe again like if if they have 
the chance to, maybe you're trading back from number four, maybe you're picking up an extra second round pick. And in doing so, maybe you say like, hey, you give us your second this year, we'll give you number 90, our last third round pick this year. And then you also give us your second round pick next year. So it's kind of like, all right, this is almost the best of both worlds for them because they get two second round picks now this year, two second round picks this next year. Uh, You've still got the two third round picks, all that. And then you get to talk about guys like this because I think that there is a chance that Quorum is still available at the first selection that they have in the third round. He was coming off the injury, but I'll say he looked really better. He looked really good as the year went on. He struggled early when he was kind of coming back to form through the injury, but no doubt about it. I mean, he'd be fantastic in Arizona. Xavier Leggett, there's a chance that he's available at, at, at the beginning of the third round. I think that that's realistic just because he didn't, he didn't measure in as big as what we thought, mm-hmm. right? He weighs as much as we thought he's around like 220, 225, which is good. I'm not saying that that's a bad thing, but South Carolina had this guy listed at six foot three. And he is this competitive contested catch, go up and get it, jump ball receiver. Well, he measured in the senior bowl and he's barely above six one. He has shorter arms than he thought he was going to have. He's got smaller hands than he thought he was going to have. So it's like, all right, that doesn't change the tape. It doesn't change what we've literally seen him do, but it's a little different. You're a little less confident when you're projecting that to the NFL level. Tested really well at the combine. We figured that he would be able to do that. But there are so many good receivers in this class that I think it is realistic. Like back end of the second round, early part of the third round, that's what I kind of think for both of these guys. But there is a chance that neither of them makes it to the third round because they are that back end of the second round player. Yeah. And that's, that's a fascinating part. You know, another name. So let's jump back up, you know, into the second and then into the end of the first, as we Tarantino this, like the, my favorite non top two, top three receiver, even though he has the potential to be is Troy Franklin. I don't know why he's not getting more run. I don't know why he's not the fourth receiver. I don't get it. I think maybe because uh, Oregon had such a high powered offense that he made it look easier than what it normally is to do in college. I don't get it. Troy Franklin, I think is an absolute stud. So if the Cardinals do trade back, and they don't get a receiver with their top 10 pick or with 27. And Troy Franklin's there in the it, it, cause that's that's his floor, right? The beginning of the second round, even though I don't know how he would get past Kansas City at 32. Like, is that kind of his range right there? Yeah, I mean, it feels like it. Uh, it doesn't feel like he's gonna be a back end of the first round guy. I think there are too many players who tested better than he did at the combine. Okay. Like, I think Xavier Worthy probably jumps him now. I don't think mm-hmm. Xavier Worthy is a better wide receiver than Troy Franklin is, but I think the NFL is going to draft him higher just because of that straight line speed. I think the same thing for A.D. Mitchell. He just tested too well. He's going to go in the first round. Um, Brian Thomas, obviously, is locked into the first round now as well. So there's only so many receivers that I think will go there. I think Roman Wilson from Michigan is now in that conversation to be a back end of the first round guy too. So I just by proxy – Troy Franklin's going to get bumped down the board a little bit. So I, it's totally realistic that that they could have a shot at taking him at the top end of the second round as the, if they wanted to. And do the thing that I like the most about Troy Franklin, not only is he really nice, smooth, vertical receiver, but he was one of the best playmakers after the catch that we saw this past year. He had a really high missed tackles forced per reception average, meaning when he got the ball in his hand, he was making guys miss. He's not content with just catching the football and going down or going out of bounds like he was trying to make guys miss and get into the open field so uh you love that playmaker mentality that he has but i think that's a realistic target for them at the top of the second round for sure i like it last one here 27 overall you know pending them sticking and staying there um give me a bouquet of names like i know that tyler guyton drops there i i can't see tyler guyton dropping there to 27 you're the Mm -hmm. draft expert tell me realistically a couple names, whether it be offensive line. I don't know if Chop Robinson's going to drop there to 27 after his combine. Like, mm-hmm. are the Cardinals logistically looking at guard, tackle, and corner at 27 to bolster this team? Like, just kind of walk me through that a little bit. The dream is Johnny Newton, I think, from okay. Illinois. And he, look, he is just as good as Byron Murphy, I think. I have both of them top 12 on my big board. I think Byron Murphy's getting all the hype and Johnny Newton's not, and I don't know why. If you look at his cumulative PFF grades over the last two years, elite run defense grade, elite pass rushing grade. Well, those are your two jobs as an interior defender. So yeah. you're doing pretty good. And it just feels as though the NFL is not as hot on Johnny Newton, despite really great production. So it feels like he's somebody who could go in the 20s. Maybe that's somebody who, if he falls a little bit, they take one of those extra third round picks, make sure they jump up and get a guy like that. I could see something like that happening. You know, Kool-Aid McKinstry, the corner from Alabama, mm-hmm. I think he could be an option for them there. I wonder if the NFL is going to be as high on a guy like TJ Tampa from Iowa State. Um, I think he, how he tests his pro day 
um, athletic wise when it comes to the explosiveness, the 40 yard dash. Like I think that'll mean a lot for him. So we'll see if he is an option there. And then a couple of the wide receivers that I named, right? If one of those, like if a Brian Thomas Jr., if, if an AD Mitchell, if somebody like that is available at the back end of the first round, do you take the chance on wide receiver there? And then maybe at the beginning of the second round, you're going uh, a Braden Fisk, a uh, a Chris Jenkins Jr., something else along the interior defensive line. But when it comes to offensive line, yeah, I I think Tyler Guyton's going to go a little bit higher than that. I wonder if Graham Barton is kind of like your ideal situation because he's just a plug and play center or guard for you. Um, again, Troy Fontana is not going to be there. So I, I think that that's kind of a pipe dream. Uh, you know, Jordan Morgan as well. I think he's a guy who has experience playing left tackle. He's probably going to move inside to the NFL. So he is, again, more of a guard prospect. But interior offensive line, I think, is a sweet spot there if that's what they're comfortable doing. Yeah, I mean, left guard is a glaring need. And with with Ezra Cleveland off the board and others soon to follow, I'm sure, staying with their current teams, that's something the Cardinals are definitely, definitely going to have to target in the draft. Among everything else, no quarterback, probably not safety, and probably you know, and that's about it. they got to target everything else. So it's really going to be a choose-your-own inventor for Monty Osfor, Trevor Sigma at Tampa Bay Trey on Twitter, NFL Stock Exchange, um, that was his pick at 27 in the most recent episode, interior defensive lineman out of Illinois. So um, I didn't, I, I hadn't even looked at him yet because you do this for a living. I don't. I watch, I watch some clips on YouTube. You and, should. Uh, He's now, fun. He's fun. Yeah. Well, listen, man. This is the beauty of the draft. Just because people overlook somebody and just because people are too high on somebody doesn't mean that's going to be exactly what will happen in the NFL. That's one of the dumbest things I say, but it's like, listen, we have no idea what the hell is going to happen. All we can do is have people like Trevor do all the legwork for us, interview him, and then crunch the numbers on our end. Trevor Sikma, Pro Football Voice, thanks so much, man. I really appreciate, appreciate it, brother. It. Alex Lindsay, Locked on Cardinals. Remember, without you, there is no me. I will talk to you tomorrow.